and we are live good evening everyone welcome to tonight's live with Jana uh, show and tonight's topic is how to deal with imposter syndrome to progress in your IT career so thank you so much for finding some time this evening to join our live discussion please make sure you introduce yourselves in the comments let us know what you do and join our conversation with your comments and questions. And maybe also mention where you're watching us from, uh, because I'm in Melbourne today, Adam is in Sydney, we're both in lockdown, happy life. <laughs> so maybe some people from Perth can join us and, <laughs> and they're like, oh, and we are not, yeah. Um, so if you're new to my live show, I'm Jana Martins, and I've recently started my journey as IT recruiter. Hence, I've started a new YouTube channel um, dedicated to IT career in Australia. So tonight, as I said, we're going to talk about how to deal with imposter syndrome to progress in your IT career. And Adam is going to share his valuable insight and real life experience when it comes to, you know, engineering career and uh, uh, career in IT and overcoming the self-limiting beliefs. So, you know, the world is changing, I'm sure very few of you may be a bit stuck, you know, with uh, all these thoughts and, uh, you know, not, not sure what to do next, uh, what next step to do to boost your career potential. So it's incredibly relevant topic. So please take and share it with your friends who need to hear this. And just before I'll pass it on to Adam to introduce himself, just want to remind you quickly that we're going live on LinkedIn, Facebook and YouTube. So to watch the replay, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's the easiest, find, easiest way to find the um, replays from last week's IT career in Australia. And I'm going live every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Melbourne time with various experts from my network. And we're talking about all the things, IT career, job search, and specifics of IT industry in Australia. So we're going to answer all your questions from all the platforms. Please make sure to stay in the topic, ask as many questions as you want and the most active participants might even get a surprise at the end of the stream so um that's enough uh it's it's enough of me so now i'm uh, passing it to adam to introduce yourself uh want to say hi please help me to get a job <laughs> look <laughs> message me message me separately i know so I make think sure that's for you, that's for you. Sure. i don't know what i got at the moment <laughs> Make sure to stay with us, uh, Panu, and we'll see what what we can do what we can do today. So, Adam, okay, please, just a few words about you. Yeah, Jana, thanks, and thanks for teeing this up because I don't I don't know that many people actually talk about this, so I really appreciate you um, reaching out and making the time to to speak about this. My name's Adam uh, Cords Cordner. Uh, I've been in software and IT for two decades. Um, it's been a, a really interesting journey. I started when there was no cloud and now um, there isn't anything physical. So it's been an interesting ride here. Um, worked for some of the big, big, big players, but I always started at the small ones. Um, so I had many startups that were acquired um, and then they ended up with big ones. So Microsoft, uh, Infor, um, SAP, Salesforce, uh, and so on are the big ones, um, but generally been in the software as a service um, area as well. Yes, as you'll notice there in the introduction, there's a few little few little deviations and a few things before and after my software and IT career. Um, if anyone's got any questions, feel free to jump in and ask any of those. But um, suffice to say, the bulk of my career has been within software and, and it's come with, with, with many challenges and there are probably more challenges to do with myself than anything else. So I'm I'm encouraged to talk about those today, Anna. Um, definitely. I'm actually really curious about the makeup makeup artist, uh, you know, in the list there. So <laughs> well, you know what's funny? I it the reason <laughs> that I got into that was I loved movies and special effects. And so I got into it. I'd finished playing ice hockey professionally and for um for Australia and I thought well I'll come back and I'll, I'll do something I'm interested in and, and long story short I started working at Fox Studios purely just to try and make <laughs> monsters do that cool stuff and then the whole um, studio moved back to the US 
And then I started getting phone calls for more work to actually do real makeup, so to speak. And I was okay at it. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I spent time doing that. But I always wanted to get into my own business, and I was always really, really interested in in um, technology and software. Always, I was a massive computer game um, nerd back in the day. I built my own PC as a kid. Um, I broke my own Mac. Like all, it was always what I was wanting to be interested in. But but yeah, so there was time there. So. Who knows? Out of lo- out of lockdown, I reckon there'll be a lot of people wanting to get their makeup done anyway. Exactly, exactly. So you never will be in, will be out of job. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So okay, so um, guys, I also want to ask you who are listening to us today. Um, you know, you know, the topic today is about like imposter syndrome, and I'm curious. You know what? What are your your self-limiting beliefs? So if you can share with us in the comments, that will be great. We're going to share ours now with Adam, I guess. And, uh, you know, uh, please join us in this conversation. You know, what sort of thoughts coming into your mind sometimes? Maybe then you're applying for a new job or want to take a promotion. What's what's stopping you sometimes? What sort of thoughts like clicking in your mind? So, uh, like Adam, what 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 are your thoughts? What's been, I guess, uh, you know, looping looping in the back of your mind sometimes, and you're like not sure if you should, you know, ne- take a next step. Yeah, it it it's funny that we we ask this because this is where this whole journey for me started, and I it it's it's how I progressed. It's literally how I progressed my software career. Um, my my biggest self limiting belief early on was that I wasn't qualified enough and, and and I really struggled at school. Now, I didn't struggle at school in any other area than when it came time to reading, I just really struggled with, with getting that done. So it meant that, you know, I was I still managed to get my education, but I, I was underqualified, so to speak. Now, going into software and IT sort of at the beginning of the 2000s, um, it was there was a lot of MBAs, there was a lot of engineering and, and um, degrees. There was a lot of degree qualified people that I was up against, and so I was, as as technically good as I was, and I was able to sort of code and and, and um, find my way around a lot of IT infrastructure. Uh, I was never taken seriously, so I thought um, that's, that's what I thought. So that was my biggest self limiting belief. Years later through a specialist we found out i was dyslexic which had so much to do with it and and following up finding that a lot of successful people um are actually dyslexic because you're forced to think laterally and so on um but that really um that really not only did it limit me in my beliefs but it also limited me in the types of work that i was i was able to put myself forward to uh, which i found really interesting so i started not that it's a bad thing but i started in business development just picking up and melting the phone. Um, and I did well, and that was my avenue in. Um, but still, every step of the way, I was always thinking that I was underqualified and that someday someone would find out and that I would be blown up or I would be exposed as a, as a fraud. Yeah. That would so, be my big... Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, it's funny, sometimes I think I'm dyslexic <laughs> because I can't spell. <laughs> Like, honestly, I can look at the word like for like, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, 10 seconds and I try to write it down, like or retype it. And I already forgot how to spell it. So, <laughs> right, can, we put, um, can we put Choco? Is it Choco Cat? Can we, Choco? Can we put Choco's yeah. Um, comment yeah. up? Yeah, that's, I, that's a great one, actually. I completely agree. There's too much in IT. I can't decide what the folks... It's true, and I, I was just thinking this before because you know when I was mentoring um, solution consultants, I'd ask them that question too. Like, is there anything that you feel that's limiting? And and I might have a, an advantage of being a professional ice hockey player previously, in that your the things that you're not good at are very obvious because there's a thousand people watching you, and there's your whole team watching you stuff up. So there are always things that you can sort of call out. But in our professional lives, believe it or not, and I think this is one thing that helped me get past it, no one's looking at you. Like, no one's looking at you. So, like, no one's sitting there day by day unless you've got a really, really bad manager. 
Um, no one's looking there day by day, watching every little thing and asking questions about your history and the things in your life. Like they're just getting about their business. Um, this is a really interesting comment because I agree, there's too much. Um, and I think it differs from people. Sometimes it's confidence. Sometimes it's it's ethnicity. Sometimes it's um, um, sex. Sometimes it's it, it, it's all these different things that I think that either you have grown up with, which is that cognitive bias, the culture of the organisation is they are putting into place as well. There are all those things and it's a constant pattern. And I would say that I'm not, um, I've not dealt with it. I think I constantly deal with it. Now as a business owner, constantly deal with it. Competitors, um, you know, other business owners, there's all these different things. It's about identifying is this a reality or is this my own belief and, and moving through it. But I couldn't agree more. There is, there is so much. And the reason there's too many things that 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 we think are limiting beliefs in in, in software is because there's people. Everyone's going to have, you know, to, to, to have one there. And we, when we, we come up with strategies, some are negative. You know, the, the biggest negative one is that we don't do something. Um, some of them are positives. We realise that there are a lot of things that we can do. Um, it was a good uh, question. Yeah. And um, I guess, yeah, the, that's, I guess, one of the really common one that you mentioned about, um, I guess, feeling that you're not qualified enough. Um, and also, I guess, uh, thinking that someone actually, you know, like constantly watching and trying to pick up your, pick up your mistakes. It's uh, so because- yeah, it's so true. <laughs> uh, I guess, you know, like if I'm talking about my self-limiting beliefs, uh, one of the strong ones, it's, uh, I guess, that a lot of people can relate being from another country. Um, there is all this like on the back of the mind or like, especially then you just move, you're thinking, oh my God, what if I don't understand people? What do people think I'm like too different or like maybe I'm too strange or whatever or people don't understand what I'm saying or people understand me differently. So I, I guess there is a lot of that as well, um, you know, especially for people who freshly moved to them to Australia. Um, but uh, yeah, I think like, you know, you have cultural difference of every time and this sort of thoughts like often pop 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 in in the in the mind thinking like oh we're we doing the things differently or like i used to do things differently and uh, that's kind of can limit your progression as well yeah and it's it's i i think the term imposter syndrome like i i i know that now in the professional world it, it's probably seen as a thing but it's always been there for a lot of people and and you know i i i know that i had it when I was younger, and it was probably because of sport. I'm not very big, and um, in ice hockey, it's, it's handy to be bigger. Um, also, I'm an Australian, and I was competing overseas. And so, it, it, you know, the, the, the professional leagues around the world are not full of Australian ice hockey players who are small. But for me, the complete difference to, say, a software career is I just put up the numbers. It didn't matter. Like it didn't matter that I was this size. It was it was that um, points were being scored, or hits were being made, or fights were being fought, or whatever it is. Teeth were being lost. It didn't matter. It 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 didn't matter any of those things. And I think about a lot of the athletes that 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 who are my favorite, like Sachin Tandulka. He's my favorite cricketer, and it's probably you know I probably get some hate mail for that being an Australian. But he's my favorite cricketer. I just, you know, he's he he's not what you would look for physically, but he's the best batsman that that ever lived. And because he just put up the numbers, so you can't deny the numbers at the end of the day. And so then moving into software, you lose track of that. I lost track of that. That that I was thinking it was that that you had to be this certain thing, or put it this way, you had to be your resume in order to succeed in your career. And as a hiring manager, I, I have to put my hand up and say, I read the front page of the resume and then I forget you. And, then, you know, even if I hire you, I don't remember what was written on there. You know, I have to have people remind me of birthdays and universities and all these things that that get you to where you think you need to be, then you try and live out your resume. But what we really should be doing, what helped me get past it, was when I understood 
what I'm actually being measured on. Instead, the thing that I can control. So to take the analogy, lots of runs in cricket. Like you, you, you hit a century. No one cares all of a sudden anymore. They're just going to care about your next century and, and making it, and and that's it. And you can focus on that. And so I think how I progressed was, um, I'm not a believer in fake it till you make it. I'm a, I'm I'm a believer in act as if instead, because faking it just just doesn't seem to work. Because I, I and it, at the end of the day, something tangible needs to transpire. So. Acting as if is 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 that, well, I want to be a solution consultant. Always wanted to be a solution consultant or a solution engineer or a sales consultant, however you want to word it. Always wanted to do it. Um, I just really enjoy being in the actual software and in the technology itself. My limiting belief that I wasn't qualified enough. But at the end of the day, I, I, I looked at actually what they did, lots of demos and integrations and so on, and, and in not, in, not in any presentation, and I'll... Challenge your audience now. In any in any inter, in any customer facing meeting that you've been to, has anyone asked for your resume? Not for a job interview, but has anyone ever asked you for a resume before you do a sales meeting or you meet a customer? And and don't just don't lie, but I, I'll I'll say on your behalf, I guarantee you haven't, because no one cares. It's the same thing when you go to your doctor. The fact that the certificate's on the wall that says they graduated from wherever um, um, medical school is fine. They might not even have it up there. But how many times have you been to the doctor and you've asked them for the transcript of their degree before they give you the diagnosis? You don't. You trust they're there. And so that was that was one way to get through it and move the career was, well, if you want to be a solution consultant, have your demo down, know your technology, show that you can sell. And so that's all I focused on. And at the end of the day, um, no one cared that I was underqualified because my number was my number. You know, I had 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 really good feedback on my demonstrations. I was supporting the sales team, and we could see the figures that were showing that if I was involved or doing a demonstration, or if I was building the integration, that they were more likely to sell. Then all of a sudden, my history is irrelevant. It's when are you available and so on. And I think that that was a habit that I uncovered earlier on and I, I was fortunate in that I could lean on a previous life as an athlete in order to be able to go, well, hang on, no one really cares because you're only as good as your next game. Like no one cares. But if you can play, they're, they're never going to uh, they're never going to turn away. So that was a critical step early in my career um, to be able to sort of move past that. Um and every at every echelon, there was a new limiting belief. You know, not enough. I, I didn't drive the right car. Um, I live in the wrong area. All these things that you just sort of you see the where you want to go to, and all these different areas um, that you realise don't actually actually matter. What matters is can you do your job. Now, if you can't do your job, there's a problem. Okay, that's not imposter syndrome. That's fraud. <laughs> That's fraud if you can't do your job. Um, yeah, so just uh, let's go back, I guess, to the definition. I guess we like uh, diving into to a lot of you know a, a lot of strategies, but uh, let's just go back to basics again. Um, the actually Hayden is asking: Is the link going to be given out? Yeah, Hayden, this link. If you're watching us on YouTube, this link will stay, so you can actually watch the replay um, of this episode just just on the same link. So, um, so as everyone, if you want to watch the replay, you can share this video here. So let's go back a little bit, you know, on the limiting belief in, in imposter syndrome. What is actually imposter syndrome? I guess we, you know, we didn't really touch on, on that. Um, because there is a really interesting definition there on the Wikipedia. So here we go. <laughs> you know, it, I found this. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's in this day and age. There's a label and a diagnosis for everything, right? There, 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 there is. Um, some of them are, are silly, and some of them are probably inappropriate to talk about in this setting. But it, it's it. This was interesting to me to find out. The summary is my summary. It, it's this feeling that you're cheating or you're doing something wrong when you're not, and that may not be professionally, but I, I think it's it, it's this. 
nagging thought that something bad may happen if someone finds out something and that hence the, the use of the word imposter which is this, this feeling there and it doesn't actually exist and again and again sandra thank you for your comment i'm not sure if you want to put that one up um i'm not saying to be a fraud like if you if 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 you are pretending to be a doctor and you need that qualification then that's a fraud and stop it um so it reminds me of um um uh god mental blank um the lawyer and he's, he pretends to be a lawyer and he's not suits it reminds me of suits right don't do that don't don't be a complete don't be a uh, um a mike ross so it, it, it to define it i think helps us all move through it so call it what you want i would even dumb it down even further to say and that's what we spoke about limiting beliefs if it's a limiting belief it's it's the thing that you think it's going to stop you then stop for a moment and think does anyone else actually care okay if you need if you need to pass the bar to be a lawyer then okay that's not imposter syndrome that's you need to be a professional to be able to do that but do you need to drive a 911 turbo convertible to be a lawyer probably not so don't go and get one to be able to do that you get you'll get there eventually with your fees you know but these are the things that are sort of along 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 the way <laughs> i haven't watched this movie so i can't comment the leonardo dicaprio movie catch me if you can makes being an imposter sexy it's a very good movie yana i'm shocked that you haven't <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very good. So the definition is, is I think, um, Mike Cannon Brooks um, from Atlassian came out and said that he suffered from imposter syndrome. And I think that's when I took note that a billionaire could admit it and feel like that. Um, and at the end of the day, the numbers don't lie, right? You look at his world, the numbers don't lie. And they, everyone has different strategies for it. So I think it's, it's, it, it's a loose diagnosis but any t any moment or any time where you feel like um that you're cheating or that you're fraudulent and you're not is a moment for you to go right well that's the thing that is holding me there what's the thing that moves you and uh, i guess you yeah and i guess you already mentioned uh start, uh, start talking about the strategy that we can imply because you know, the difference between, uh, you know, cheating and actually being a fraud, it's uh, basically when you can measure it. Like if you can measure something, like, you, you know, that saying if you can't measure something, it doesn't exist. If it doesn't count it, <laughs> if you can't count it, it doesn't exist. So um, I guess uh, you already mentioned um, one of your strategies. It's about, you know, uh, actually measuring your success with the um, real numbers instead of just kind of feeling like oh maybe i'm doing it right or maybe i'm not doing it right and actually comparing with the real kpis yeah i mean i, I use the example like a hole in one is a hole in one um, i haven't got one yet even though i love golf <laughs> but a hole in one is a hole in one and even if that bounces off the cart and hits a person and and you know a bird picks it up and it drops hits someone on the foot and goes in it's still a hole in one right no matter how it's done at the end of the day people are going to remember you for that hole in one probably never going to get it again but you know that that it's the number at the end of the day um so it, it yes on the tip side at a minimum well what is expected in that role do that um choco cat which is just this coolest name and icon Ask a really good question. Like, what if you what if you have the qualification and some experience, but people expect you to have much more? You're a fraud then. Probably. You know, it, it's what gives the impression at the end. But if I flip this around and say, what are they expecting and can you do it? Then no, you're not a fraud. If if they want more experience, then spend more time there. It's the only way that, that you can get more experience. Um, it's 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 an individual personal thing. It's not one imposter syndrome is not someone coming to you from head office or HR and saying, "Hey, you've got imposter syndrome." 
that's not what's happening here. It's it's not anything that you would necessarily, um, you know, put on the the plaque at the front of your desk or in your LinkedIn profile. You know, I have limiting beliefs of this. It might not be. Might actually be a good thing to put up. Who knows? Um, this is about you as an individual. If someone comes to you and say, "Hey, you, you, this is not what I expected," that's nothing to do with imposter syndrome. It's that's do what's expected. I know it's harsh, but again, this is probably the athlete in me, which is, you know, we're paying you to score goals. We we brought you here to have fights. It, it's do that. I don't care about anything else. As, as harsh it has sort of harsh and as black and white as that is. Um, this is a personal a personal thing, um, which is interesting but, because it happens to a lot of people, but it happens inside of a company. But do you think it's need to be to a certain extent? Like you know, it's the uh, it's all about it's about realistic expectations as well. Um, so you know, like uh, if they expecting something completely different from you or some sort of experience that you just uh, couldn't get anywhere anyway. Yeah. Um, so I think it's about realistic expectations as well, because okay. if you do have a qualification, some experience, uh, but uh, people expect, expect expect more. So I guess it's coming back to this measuring it. Can they measure? Can we measure what they expect? Yeah. So I think it's self-belief is a fine line between self-belief and self-deception. Self-belief is looking at a flight of 100 stairs and going, I believe I can walk up these stairs, and off you go. Um, Self-deception is looking at 100 stairs and thinking you can jump up them. You know you can't, so don't. But a lot of people have self-deception. So if I wanted to be a lawyer and and I needed that um, qualification and I went in, then I'm not going to get the job. I'm going to be disappointed. They're going to be disappointed. It's probably a bad one. They probably wouldn't let me in anyway with 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 um the my lack of qualifications in my um criminal record. They probably wouldn't let me they probably wouldn't let me in. I don't have a criminal record. Um but yeah, measuring it is is important. And you know what? Sometimes that doesn't even have to be anything that anyone else measures. It, it's just that thing that you know is you is part of your job or the job that you're trying to get into and being able to build it up as a skill. Because a qualification is a qualification. I mean, and I don't want to take away from MBAs or going to university, um, but a lot of what you do there rarely does it transpire into what you're doing today, um, which is a shame because I'd love to, you know, be living on my own again and <laughs> and partying into all hours of the night, but I just can't. You know, <laughs> the only thing I had to worry about was where am I going to get my noodles from? That was it. But I'm joking. It, it's it's um, being able to measure it is important. That's one. That's one thing. Being able to sort of be able to measure it would be good, um, Chokakat. If you have um, more like a specific example, because that that would be great to discuss. Because expectation could be so um, so different as well, you know. Um, and also, it's a good yeah, question. It could, right? be, it could be like so many, so many examples. You know, like if someone will be expecting me, I don't know, speak without the accent. Are we coming back to this topic? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, like I can spend uh, you know hours and hours and hours uh, trying to get rid of my accent, but it's kind of on the border of being unrealistic expectations. I still can do it. You know, I can walk on it and can do it. Again, but does anyone care? <laughs> I mean, it, it, I mean, it, other than I, it, I'm curious, but it, does anyone anyone care? Another way to to, to meet this, and, and I think let's leave this question here. Um, pop, pop that, if if you wouldn't mind, like pop that one back up because I think yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, it brings me to another tip. Is mm -hmm. well, bring whatever you're good at forward, offer it, give it up. One thing that I was very good at was presenting um i was able i was able to present so what i would do is go into this sort of bartering or this you know commoditize what i did so i was forthcoming i was involved in groups i was i was helping people i'd put myself up in the business community in my own company and and say hey look these are the things 
that I'm really good at and I've got some free time here if anyone would want these things. Shape your um, expertise and experience. Be known for. And I, personal brands are a funny one. I, I kind of don't subscribe to it because be yourself and generally gets you a certain way. But highlight. And so if we kind of look down at like having a good knowledge of your KPIs, absolutely, and just hit them. Hit them at the end of the day. Like be a biz, be be in business to hit a number. Um, but offering up the things that you do really well can really help shape. Um, not only will it help shape the the story that's being told and what everyone else's belief is about yourself, it also shapes the things that you actually really enjoy and want to do in your career, which is the the funniest thing that I've experienced. Like I I love doing a software demo, and I love a complex problem and being able to present the solution back. And because I was forthcoming with that as a skill, as the thing that I was good at and I was helping, I was coaching, I was um, offering to do it whenever I could, it then became my job full-time. And so that's that act as if compared to, um, um, what's the, what was that, what was the, fake it till you make it. Um, on the experience side, it's like, well, Show the experience that you've got. What's the thing that you actually are really good at? What's your golf swing? Like what's the one thing that you do really well, which is your favourite club, and do that and offer it out freely and help people get there with you. And then you, you basically shape your own um, your own career. <laughs> the other tip, just again, like we said at the beginning, like not, no one really cares that much about you. It's sad. Um, but but no one really really cares and not thinking about you. I don't, you know, unless you know someone at work's fallen in love with you, or they're your manager and they're a micromanager. Other than that, you know, I go home and I didn't really think about staff all that much. You know, I expected staff to do exactly what I was doing, which was just my job. But I would be free in coming forward and helping with public speaking or helping with financial planning whatever it is that i had an interest and in, i could do as a skill set i would i would do those things as well and uh, i guess um you mentioned a few times about you know fake it till you make it and you know like that you don't really buying into you know this saying um I just actually really recommend there is a great uh, TED talk about it uh it's called fake it till you become it <laughs> I think I think I'm, uh, I forgot the name Amy Amy it's a great TED talk it's about you know actually about this feeling that you then you feel that you don't belong and just uh you know start start feeling like you belong to try to you know um talk with people about it and you have it as a as a your last tip you know talk with other people and you will actually will be surprised how many people might feel the same that they feel um a little bit that they don't belong here and so on and and share these feelings and start acting like you belong um so fake it till you become it <laughs> because you actually becoming it not just making it um but I, I guess we, we have a comment from Michael, and it's exactly what I want to say um, as well, um, because your last point is talk about it, and it's the most important part. And Michael is saying, I'm a bit late to the party, but I found helping those early in their career than, uh, than me help me to recognize my own capability and skill grow. So, And yep. I think that's exactly about this tip about talking about the things that you know, because sometimes I, I I give example quite often, like when we boiling an hour oven, uh, you know, word, and we only see our colleagues at work, we so used to our knowledge, we think that it's common sense, until we actually start talking with, uh, you know, people who doesn't know it or in the early stages of their career, we're not realizing how much we how much we know, and uh, we talk about it last week with um, Johan about mentorship and like being a mentor and uh, being a mentee. So the one great thing about actually maybe overcoming the poster syndrome is uh, being a mentor. Um, you know, put your head up that you want to train someone uh, at your workplace and being a mentor because then you'll be surprised and you start talking about your knowledge 
uh, you'll be surprised how much you actually know. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's it's overlooked. Um, and and Michael, I think that it's a really good observation. The way that I I how would I say it? How do you scale it? Is is the question I always have because I I got to a point um, when I was a solution consultant at 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 Domo where I didn't have enough time to mentor everyone because I had given so much and I'd put a lot of focus and effort on highlighting those skill sets. I I it was not detrimental because I'd always put the customer first, but it was a, a point where I, where I was going well I can't meet my mentor um, commitments because I've got customers. And so how do you, do you scale that? And on reflection, I probably something I should have done a lot sooner once I felt that I was more senior and became an executive inside, um, which is your language. And th- you don't just have to be a mentor, mentee, mentor, one-on-one. In, you, in your talking, and it's simple things doing away with acronyms, acronyms that you know people are going to be confused about, doing away with um, company or industry-specific jargon and actually just talking like a normal person so that those who are coming through an organisation are being educated and mentored culturally, not individually, even though individually is important as well. So, you know, I would say in phrases, even your customers will build more rapport with you if you feel, if they feel like they're um, they're they're being spoken to uh, in a way that is 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 intelligible. So I would talk about connecting your enterprise resource and planning platform. Now, everyone in IT knows that's ERP, but for everyone else, it, it it's out of there as well. Oh, we just got some more context. Can you put Michael's question up? Oh, we have like a whole discussion there going. No, no, <laughs> we should go back to those ones. I, we'll go back to those, those, last, those last ones. Um, the, which one? Go back. That one, the, the, the last one. Oh, yeah, yeah, the last one. Yeah, um, yeah I, I had to put so much focus on my skill improvement that I only surrounded myself with those much more skilled than me. I never stopped to look back at how much I had learned. Yep. Yeah, th- and it, it just puts the cap on it perfectly, right? It's um, one thing that I found that imposter syndrome or that feeling, what it did is it withdrew me. So it, when you're on a sporting team, it's different because if you stuff up, people can see that you stuff up, but you're still on the team, right? Um, but one thing it did is that I always, I was always withdrawn. So I, I always felt like I couldn't participate or... In that big meeting, I couldn't say, oh, dude, I think you're wrong because I wasn't qualified or senior and so on. So by gathering those people around um, and sort of spending time with those who are ex- who have skills that, are, that you think you want to acquire and those who you feel don't have the skills that you yet have and so on, it becomes more of that team environment, which is where talking about it, um, talking about it comes into. Um, Sandra's question is bang it up because it's so true. Um, I personally think social media pressure and extra pressure in workplace has uh, has given birth um, for this imposter season phenomenon. So I, um, I I completely agree and I disagree at the same time, um, it, respectfully. Um, for me, I was experiencing this earlier in my career, two years before Facebook. Um, what I think it's done is it helped. It, 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 for me, I identified, I think a lot of people suffered in silence, so to speak. And I, I think that's where the ladder concept came in, that you would attach things and experience and be able to climb this to climb this ladder. Um, so that's where I disagree with that social media may have been the catalyst. However, I completely agree that it exacerbates it and it brings it. I also think that what it does is it brings a lot more external things from an organisation. So in an organisation, you're generally looking at the people around you. Um, LinkedIn, now you're looking at the people around you in your industry and so on. So, And there's stupid things in there even where they benchmark you against other people and and so on. Yeah. So I completely agree that I think there's an additional pressure or those that may not have experienced or felt um, limiting beliefs because those hadn't necessarily been brought into their sphere. Uh, we definitely see that with with social media. So, um, Sandra, I completely agree, and I can, and, but I disagree. 
um, that <laughs> it's always been there, but I think it is absolutely um, exacerbated. And I'm glad you pointed it out, which is, I mean, I only got Instagram a couple of months ago with my company and I can see, you know, you, it's it's what you're putting forward. But in an organisation, you, you can't hide behind your social media. You're going to be... Um, yeah, it's a good question. So why haven't we heard it in 10 I, years? You, yeah, and I guess, you know, like you, you mentioned it, yeah, because uh, with the social media, we compared the, the whole world, you know, like a market became global. And obviously, with all the remote work as well, you competing. You feel like sometimes you're competing with the whole world. Um, but I guess it's it's really good to think to remember it will be always someone who does the same thing better. <laughs> always, so it's it's completely normal. You know, you're not going out there and keep comparing yourself with the world best. Uh, I don't know the world best engineer or like the the world best the CTO or something like this. You don't do those things. It it always will be so someone who does something better. And um it just accepting that fact. It's not about you know benchmarking you know yourself with the whole world. It's about again coming back to your present situation and understand like what I can offer, uh what's my strong skills and uh, where where I can apply them the best. Yes it's it's also recognize what you want. And we're talking about a career here. It, it's about recognizing um, that nuance. Okay, do you want to be number one or do you want to play in the league? Now, I always wanted to play in the league, right? I just wanted to get into the league. And so there are limiting beliefs and there were things that I felt, um, you know, mine, again, to repeat, if you missed it at the beginning, things like being qualified enough or having dyslexia. These things that were limiting me from doing it, at the end of the day, I just needed to put up the numbers. Put up the numbers, people are going to notice. Put yourself out there with the things that you do really well, people are going to notice, and you're going to get a ticket to the big league. And so I was happy to play in the big league until I got to a certain point, and then, yes, then I wanted to be number one. Well, I absolutely wanted to be number one because you've been in the league and you've got the experience and then you get into a whole, you get into the cycle again, but it's about identifying it. It's about it's about understanding those those sort of different things as well. Experience is such a funny thing. Everyone wants it, but no one's willing to give you it. It's one of the weirdest things. And so, you know, Michael's comment before, like handing, the, the handing off of experience is, is a responsibility for everyone in the company. Um, the day you start, you should be handing on that experience. Um, it's such a funny thing. Everyone wants it. Then um, everyone wants it. No one's willing to give it. But also, how do I prove that I got it? It's it, it's it, it's a funny thing there. And Thank yeah, you. I guess Choga had the um, Choga Cat has a um, exactly you know uh, exactly comment on this. You know the catch twenty two view experience. Uh, yeah. You know, sometimes Phil just is hopeless at this point. Uh, it's better of changing careers. Yeah, no, it won't be because <laughs> my grandfather said to me, wherever you go, there you are. It, it's it's not going to make a difference. Um, it It's it, firstly, if if you want to change careers that and that that that's that's fine. Just make sure you, you, that it's in line with what you're really good at. It's and or even what you're just good at. If you're good at it, then make sure that we put it up there as well. Um, the hopeless feeling is self perpetuating, and it may not just be imposter syndrome. It, it there might be other areas um, that we that that we may want to spend some time and attention on. So I don't want to dismiss your your question at all, you, or not your question, but your comment because you're definitely going to feel hopeless in your career um, if you believe those limiting beliefs. Um, it's funny, but no one else does. I can and I, I, I totally agree, Adam. It's, it doesn't matter which industry it is. Uh, you know, we can, we, can feel, we can feel the same no matter which industry uh, they're working in, and it will be some point that we will feel stuck. And I think it just, it's normal to feel stuck sometimes. Uh, we all go through the ups and downs, and I guess it's what Michael and Sandra was talking about. You know, social media. Yes, everyone put 
the highlights on social media and not always putting what's actually uh, going on behind the scenes. And it's completely normal to feel stuck sometimes and, you know, feel hopeless. But uh, that's what we're talking about. You know, there is uh, techniques to overcome this feeling and actually stop feeling like you, you know, you, you, the, the only way is avoidance. It's about actually understanding what you really want and how your ideal life, ideal career should look like and what you can do, what measurable steps you can do to achieve it. Yeah, and look, maybe IT is its own worst enemy because there are, if you look at an IT company, and I've worked for the biggest, there are, and look, this is a, a gross assumption, but there's 10 to 20% of the company actually is in the business of IT, which is, you know, making stuff work. The other 80 to 90% are sales and marketing and customer service, and the list goes on. There are people who have had IT careers that can't tell you how to express a, they can't, couldn't write the simplest SQL or tell you what to type in Excel to get a multiplication. There are people who have built long IT careers, so to speak, that have never coded, that have never learned control out delete. It doesn't, it, it depends. If you want, I mean, I have a passion for software and IT because I think that this is the age in our lives where this has the biggest effect on human existence, pandemic side. Um, but can you, side note, can you imagine this pandemic and us getting through lockdown without the cloud? Can you, can you imagine if <laughs> Netflix, you know, we'd, like all these things, it'd be, it'd be impossible. So I'm passionate that I'm moving it forward there. Um, early in my career, I was in sales. Then I moved into solution consulting and then I moved into more executive roles and got further and further away from the technology. So, um, <laughs> it's it it's to look at it and just think that it's technology um would be wrong and and so look choco or anyone else it, it careers is is how you want to categorize it you can be a career marketing person and move industries and you can be a career industry person and move you know different different walks you know i've seen incredible marketers become really really good solution consultants I've seen, I mean, you look at all the great salespeople that become CEOs. I've seen engineers that become head of product. I've seen marketers that become um, product managers and engineers. And so, um, again, it, it, it's it's a self-assessment. What are the things that you're good at? Put those things forward. Um, what are the things that you're measured against ultimately? And just focus on that like a business. Like if you kick an ass, no one cares. If you suck, you suck. Like if you suck at your job, you suck at your job. It's not imposter syndrome. You suck at your job. And so either figure out what those things are you need to do and do those um, or to pivot slightly if that's, if that's where you want to move. But it's that self-assessment. And the best way to do a self-assessment is exactly that. Do not look over the fence. Do not look at the neighbours. Do not look at the guy across the way. Don't look at Yana or me or anyone. Self-assessment. Just go, what do I, you know, what, what am I good at? What do I enjoy doing, and what are those things that I'm measured at, measured by, and 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 be very very selfish about it, um, and do it as a self assessment because the only reason that the imposter syndrome exists is because we think other people care and they 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 don't. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and. Uh... Adam, you know, we're getting to like a 50 minutes of our conversation. Uh, it's time, you know, it's time to wrap up. I guess we can take, talk endlessly, you know, about imposter syndrome because it's a, you know, a massive, massive topic because, you know, we start talking obviously about the limiting belief itself. I guess, you know, one thing I want to add about the limiting beliefs, um, there is, um, I think it was... Um, Louise Hay that said, like, there is no such a law that says that if you um, believe in something in the past, you have to continue to believe in it. So basically, if you, you know, had any self-limiting thought before and you thought like, you know, like you truly believe that, you know, maybe you're bad at this or you can't do this, 
no one stop you to change that thought right now. And it doesn't, it's not going to happen like overnight like this. But as I said, like the, the, the quote is, there is no written law that if you believe in something before, you have to believe in it for the rest of your life. So you can change the things you believe in. And uh, that's, I guess, something that um, I probably encourage everyone to do. Like, you know, think about, find those limiting beliefs and think how you can walk through and what you can do and how you can put these smart goals around it to change those, to change those beliefs. Could have put it better. <laughs> and uh, we have a few comments. Um, just too many comments, but we need to, you know, time to rub. Once you start challenging your, your limiting beliefs, they start losing power over you. Journaling is a good way of confronting them. Um, I want to talk about the post but I don't think I'm qualified. Michael, good one. I Did like you come it. I was going to give a soft, like a software joke, but yeah, dude, that is hilarious. That's actually really funny. Um, and the, yeah, I, I need to bring this comment uh, as well. I like Adam's hat, you know, Adam, here you go. That's yeah. Well, I, I have to come forward and say Yanni is also my business partner. So I don't know what's this hat and there's a big story I can't talk about. Um, on this forum, but there is a story behind the hat. Um, yeah, Yanni is my, as Yanni is in, in the coffee business with me. There you go. And uh, yeah, I guess that's. Um, uh, sorry, guys, if we didn't uh, read someone's, you know, someone's comments. Uh, I think we just missed a few from Sandra. But um, yeah, you know, we can talk about imposter syndrome for for <laughs> for years. But Sandra, definitely, the imposter syndrome existed all the all the you know human being history <laughs> it's not something that just come up in social media it's uh, it's been with us it's you know part part of the human nature it just sometimes it's uh <laughs> um social media maybe highlight some things for us so um yeah adam your coffee business just uh you know to um wrap it up tell us a little bit about this you know you've been I mean, it's a good follow-on industry but uh look you you're doing something completely different at the moment i think you're not qualified to do it that's right <laughs> i really, I really it, it, it's funny it, it, again i enjoy i enjoy the challenges of, of going into spaces that that i that i don't know but that i also but i don't i have a you know i believe that you know that it can be done um long and short I went into to, to business with um, the guy that that ran the cafe that I loved going to. And during lockdown and the first wave of lockdown, um, it was obvious that we weren't we were going to get good coffee at home anymore. And so we we just came up with the idea, well, why can't we get the cafe into a into a pod to someone's house? And so we went down the path of making sure that we put really good coffee into an eco-friendly Nespresso compatible pod and we roasted and packed it here in Sydney and we were able to do it. And so um, I will say it is very similar to a software company at the end of the day. I mean, it's customers, there's a lot of things behind the scenes and problems that need to be solved. It was something that I had never never thought I'd be in the coffee business, um, but I'm glad that I did it because again, I've learned so much and I'm learning more and more about myself as a professional as well. Um, um, but yeah, it's it's been a very interesting, very interesting ride, and thank goodness we did it because now we can get good coffee at home. So, guys, if you you know want to contact um, Adam about coffee, you can head to his uh, Podi Coffee website. Um, also, you can connect with Adam through the email or LinkedIn. Uh, follow Adam on Instagram as well, and uh, because he's on Instagram for last few months, yeah. <laughs> Building his imposter syndrome and even more. I'm ready to go. Yep, I'm, I'm ready to go. I figured I figured it out. But um, yeah, and LinkedIn. Anyone that wants to connect with me on LinkedIn, um, please do. I, I'm I'm always willing to 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 um, to chat and reach out there. Um, and for our listeners, anyone that um, wants good coffee at home, um, go ahead to potifycoffee.com.au. 
Use the um, promo code YANA at the checkout and you'll get 10% off, including our subscriptions as well. So um, go ahead and use that. Um, it is available globally, um, but within Australia at this stage, we're offering free shipping because of uh, the lockdown. We want everyone to get good coffee. But outside of that, I, I've written an article a while ago. It's on my LinkedIn um, page as well. It's also got the YouTube clip to Mike Cannon Books uh, TED Talk around imposter syndrome as well. I'm passionate about helping people move forward in their their careers and and you know if I can help out by the message here and there or point you in the right direction, um, just reach out and and pick it up from there. There you go. Send us send your LinkedIn connection, Adam. There you go. Yeah, I'll accept it. So, <laughs> and uh, guys, from my side again, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for all your comments. Obviously, if you're enjoying our discussion, please make sure to like this video uh, because it will encourage, obviously, me to keep going and keep bringing various experts from my network to share their knowledge. So, if you enjoy our conversation, please make sure to like um, to like this video. Um, and of course, I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel as well so you can notify about upcoming events and join me every Wednesday. And just um, for the announcement, next Wednesday, 1st of September, we will be talking with Kartik and we'll be talking about delivery manager. Yeah, what does the delivery manager do and how to become one? A really specific topic. Um, I guess like, especially for people starting in IT, sometimes it's a bit, you know, like some career paths could be a bit confusing. Uh, you know, what what actually delivery manager does uh, and uh, is it the technical position? Is it not like, who's those fifth people? Like, you know, I will learn a lot next. <laughs> I will learn a lot myself next Wednesday as well. So, and I encourage you to join me on the 1st of September at 5.30 PM. And Adam, just to, you know, wrap up um, tonight's live stream. Do you have any favorite inspirational quote? <laughs> I, I've got a couple. Yep. You sprung this on me. Um, Hope is not a strategy. That's that's one. And my coach for the Australian ice hockey team, the, my under twenty ones team, and it stuck with me. And it was rather harsh, but he said to us, he pulled us into the change room, and uh, after we lost, and he said, if you if at first you don't succeed, you lost. Deal with it. And that stuck with me. And I know it's it's bleak, but it's true because if you don't succeed, you lost. Like, <laughs> that's how it works. So it did work in other ways. It's you can try, try again. I'm sure you can, but it was one of the best. It was um it was it was one of the best quotes. And then the other one that he said, which I still is is there's no iron team, but there is an iron win. And it, you know, at the right time, sometimes you need to be the iron the win. So they're, they're, my, they're my favorite quotes. And then the others are just from movies. They've got nothing to do with business. But anyway. <laughs> I feel like I should add to those one, you know, from your coach, like about, uh, you know, losing and dealing with it. Uh, there's another good quote, uh, you know, uh, on the optimistic side of the things. Um, it's uh, never be scared to start from scratch. You're not start, starting from, uh, from nothing. You're starting from experience. So, yeah, sometimes we... Sometimes we're losing, uh, but it doesn't mean that we can't start back and uh, we just learn from our mistakes. Just deal with it and learn from it. <laughs> 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 but make sure you don't feel like you're a fraud, yeah? <laughs> That's right. Be realistic. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Adam. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us tonight. Uh, thank you for all your comments. Uh, please uh, connect with me on LinkedIn as well if you uh, haven't done it yet. And I'll see you next Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you.